Welcome to everybody to PCR, Euro PCR 2021. It is a really pleasure on my side uh, to uh, host this uh, magic touch uh, session about a new stand, new drug coated balloons. Uh, Dr. Bernardo Cortese and uh, Dr. Sandeep Barajan will be with me discussing uh, this uh, interesting topic. I will uh, give an overview of drug-coated balloon and then we go into specific uh, questions with uh, uh, my panelists. Thank you very much, Bernardo. Yes, thank you, thank you, Antonio. So uh, since you are a, a, a recognized master of PCI in the world, uh, we would like to know and to understand currently in 2021, which is your main indication for using a DCB in your daily practice. Now, why do you use a DCB instead of a stent? That's uh, uh, important. I have uh, uh, three ways, uh, three indications for use of DCB. One is uh, instant restenosis, and uh, I highlight the fact that lesion preparation is essential before moving to DCB for instant restenosis. Second is small vessels, vessels smaller than 2.5 or 2.5, and in this regard, they are published randomized studies supporting what I just said. And third, maybe the new uh, indication uh, to limit the stent length, to not use the stent when the result is clear and uh, beautiful without a stent. So to limit the usage of stent when a stent is not absolutely needed. This is not a competition with stenting, but is a way uh, to avoid the full metal jacket and uh, uh, to be a little bit conservative towards using a very long stay. So Dr. Sandeep, uh, uh, you are an expert, uh, uh, not only in the usage, but also in uh, the way uh, Nanolut technology, which is a magic touch technology works. Can you go in detail and explain to us what are the key features of this drug-coated balloon? Thank you, Dr. Colombo. Um, so in regards to Magic Touch, I would like to give some background. As you know, the Magic Touch technology uh, caught its C mark in 2016. Now, one of the main limitations of putting a sirolimus drug on a, a drug-coated or a balloon is the poor lipophilicity of the drug itself. Uh, whereas paclitaxel, it's very easy to deliver into the vessel wall because it's highly lipophilic. And hence, most of the DCB we have uh, are paclitaxel uh, coated balloons. Now, Concept Medical has been a pioneer in um, uh, inventing this new technology called the Nanolute, where essentially what they've done is they have filled um, the sirolimus drug uh, in a, a nanoparticles which are highly lipophilic and these particles uh, carry this uh, sirolimus drug and they are coated on the on the balloon now upon inflation in the vessel in the coronal arteries or even in the peripheral vessel these uh, little particles the nanoparticles uh, get into the vessel wall then releases the drug which then exhibits its uh, anti-proliferative action uh, within the vessel wall. Um, so if I show you the next picture, this is quite interesting. You could see here. So these are the sirolimus uh, particles, um, which are encapsulated in a, in a drug carrier, which is a phospholipid, so highly lipophilic. And, uh, and they use a dedicated spray coating on the balloon surface. Um, and when you inflate the balloon, these particles get into the uh, vessel wall and then they release the uh, phospholipid or the uh, uh, limus uh, drug. Now, we 
have been using this technology since 2018 uh, in our unit, and uh, we have done uh, over 600 cases uh, till to date uh, with uh, Magic Touch. Uh, we have published our initial experience uh, uh, last year uh, in a CCI journal, and the latest data of these uh, 500 patients, uh, we have a real world uh, data from our center, uh, which is quite uh, encouraging. Okay, so I'll just give a little summary of the data. So as I said, we have had over 500 patients data now. Uh, the, the patients are quite complex and so are the lesion because it is reflected in their demographics. So 40% of the patients were diabetic. We had 17% of patients with a CKD and 40% of them were in a restenotic lesion and 60% of the cases were in acute coronary syndrome. And the vessel diameter uh, was generally less than three millimeters. So almost 60% uh, of the lesions were in vessel less than 3.0 millimeter. And the lesion length was 26 millimeters. So these were long lesions, small vessels. Despite this, the clinical outcome with a median follow-up of 18 months, uh, we have seen a low cardiac uh, death, which is 2%, and a low target vessel MI, which was 4%. The TLR was 10% with the overall MACE rate, which was defined as a cardiac death, target was MI and TLR was 11%. So despite the population being complex and the lesion being complex, the uh, revascularization rates on the hard endpoints especially are acceptable. Technically, this is one of the very good DCBs I've come across, especially in terms of deliverability because we have not had any uh, magic touch where we fail to deliver into the lesion, even if it is a distal tortuous calcified lesion. So that data appears promising, although we need more data in terms of registry, which is ongoing, and also a, a comparison with the packet axle, which is an RCT. Again, we are all part of it. So Dr. Bernardo Cortese, who is a real expert, uh, not only in the field of magic touch, but in the field of the drug coated balloon, is going to give us uh, uh, a summary of his experience with uh, this device and also update us regarding the clinical program of uh, uh, drug-coated balloon, um, Sirolimus eluting uh, magic touch. Bernardo? Yes, uh, Antonio, thank you for this question. And I'm really happy uh, to tell everybody here in Europe PCR 2021 that uh, the three of us, uh, you, Antonio, and Sandeep, are running a really a, a, an important clinical program about magic touch. Um, Magic Touch started doing some, uh, 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 providing some safety data with the FASICO studies, which showed that, that the midterm follow up that this device was safe, and uh, also the preliminary data that it was effective. Then we decided to have uh, uh, some experience uh, with the Eastburn, which is going to be the largest registry on DCB ever. We have enrolled more than 2,000 patients, and we are going to present this data with a primary endpoint of TLR in, within, uh, in, uh, in six or seven months uh, from now. And then we decided also to run uh, three additional studies with Magic Touch. The first one is Transform 1, which is actually comparing uh, Magic Touch with Paclitaxel coated balloon in a small vessel disease setting. And we are a rolling patient in the study. The chairman uh, with myself uh, is uh, Professor Serraius. And then we have Transform 2, Transform 2 is going to enroll patients, uh, real world patients with a complex native vessel disease. And we will uh, enroll patients and randomize them between magic touch and uh, a virolimus saluting stent. And then we are pushing this limit forward because we have designed the Picoleto 3 study, which actually in the really real life and really complex setting is going to randomize patients between Paclitaxel coated balloon, magic touch, and drug eluting stent. And now we are talking about the CTOs and very, very long lesions. So I think that I'm hope, I hope that within a two or three years from now, we will be talking about magic touch as a standard of care for our coronary artery disease patients. So thank you very much, Bernardo. Very interesting. I think uh, this wheel is turning. Uh, really completely. We saw uh, drug eluting stent uh, uh, being uh, the standard of care 
and all the standard of care, but now uh, drug court balloon is emerging as uh, not really as a competitor, but uh, as, a, as a niche from the beginning, but maybe something more than a niche. So I'm really very excited to see what the future is going to give us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.